Wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, and that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Approximately 50 years ago, uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones preached a series of sermons on this part of the letter to the Ephesians. And in that series of sermons, he compared the relationship of husband and wife with the relationship of Christ and the church. As he did that, he encouraged Christians not to miss a central part of the marriage imagery. And he called that the bride's privileges. And so, Jay and Trace, by the grace of God, you are part of Christ's bride. You are members of his body, which is the bride of Christ, which is made up of believers from every nation, from every age of the world, um, all over. And so what I want to charge you with tonight and you to, this afternoon and to think through is, is to consider four things. First, I charge you to consider that your bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ, has given you his very life. Scripture reminds us that believers have become sharers in his life. Before marriage, a man largely lives for himself. He does what he, in essence, wants to do. He goes where he wants to go, and he is basically accountable to himself. But when he marries, he no longer does that. His life is now shared by his wife. Because she is part of him, she is a part of his life, and everything that is true about him. Jay, you will no longer make decisions based just on the way those decisions affect you. You will make your decisions from now on based on the way those decisions affect your life bride. She will always be in your mind. And it is the same way with the bride of Christ. We are sharers in the life of Christ. You are in Christ. You are always in his mind. In all of his outlook, all of the time, you have your place and you have your part. Colossians tells us that Christ is your life because you have been taken up into his life. There is a lot of sadness and a lot of anxiety and a lot of purposelessness, lack of meaning for many in the world. But that is not true of the members of Christ's bride. He has given you his very life. Second, one result of your sharing in his life is that he has placed upon you his name. You are called Christians, and that is the greatest truth that there will ever be about you. You no longer are what you were. Your names have been changed. Again, you look in the world, it helps us to understand the passage. Generally, although it's a little different world now, but generally, when a woman is married to a man, it is the woman who changes her name, not the man who changes his. So it is with the bride of Christ. Christ has put his name on you. He is not ashamed for you to bear his name. Before, we had a different name, but not anymore. Galatians 3, Colossians. There's neither Greek nor Jew, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. There used to be. These were the names that we bore before, but no more. We are now Christians. We have a new name. 2 Corinthians. From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. The question for the early Jewish Christians was not, is he Jewish? Not, is he Gentile? But is he a Christian? Does he bear the name of Christ? That's what I want to know. And the question today is not how many degrees do you have. It's not was your grandmother president of the women in the church. It's not who is your favorite philosopher or what is your favorite movie or how clever are you or how witty are you or how much money do you make. 
The question is, do you have the name of Christ upon you? Christ says in effect this, forget that old name. Take my name upon you. You belong to me. Revelation, he that overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. As the doctor said, this is the astounding thing that happens to all who are Christians, all who are members of this body, which is the bride of Christ. You have been given a new name by the Prince of Glory, and wonder of wonders, it is his own name. There is no higher honor or glory greater than this. You're lost in a new name, Jay and Trace, and it is the highest name of all. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that is the name that is given to us who are constituted the bride of Christ. Third, because you share in the life of Christ, you also share in his dignity and his glorious position. Ephesians 2 reminds us that God has raised us up together in Christ and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is a present reality. Wherever the bridegroom is, there the bride is also. And the standing and the dignity and the position that belongs to him belongs to his bride. It, it does not matter who you were. At the moment she becomes the bride, she shares all. What he is, Jay and Trace, he makes us. This is inevitable because of the relationship. He is the light of the world. You are the light of the world. He is enthroned. You will be enthroned. But some would look at Jay and Trace and those that make up the bride of Christ and say, oh, but they're commoners. They're rather common. They're not royalty. Yes, that's true. But guess what? That doesn't matter. She's married to the prince. And she shares his throne with him. And that is the dignity, the honor that he confers upon you as members of the bride of Christ. Fourth and finally, as members of Christ's bride, you share in his privileges. As soon as Trace is pronounced to be Mrs. J. Robertson, you will immediately begin to share in all of the privileges that are his as the husband. Now, among the many privileges you will share, with the Lord Jesus. I want to remind you of one. Hold on to this. The bride of Christ shares in the Father's love. Jesus said this, that the world may know that you've sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Jane Trace, think about this during your marriage. God the Father has loved you from eternity past as much as he loves his own son. Because of your relationship with the Son, you have relationship with the Father. In the world that we live in, when a father's son takes a bride, in essence, the father looks at her and says, I've got a new daughter. This is my daughter. And that new daughter has access to the Father. She has privileges with the Father that she didn't have before. But the only reason, Trace, is because you're now in a relationship with the Father's Son. You're in a relationship that you weren't in before. The same principle applies to believers. We who formerly had no access to God the Father because of our sin, we now have access through the blood of Christ, and we enjoy relationship through Him. For the Son's sake, the Father will never refuse us. He will always listen to us. He'll never get tired of us coming to Him. He'll always have time for us. He will always love us. Nothing can separate you from that love. I want to conclude with you thinking about this. You're familiar with the words of the Lord Jesus. In this world you will have tribulation. Do not think that when you as two sinners come together that sin goes away. In many ways you'll find it multiplied in all kinds of strange ways. Adversity will come, temptation will come, and discouragement will come. So you must remember through your times as a family worshiping, praying and looking at God's word, through your times individually worshiping, through your times worshiping in your church home, you must be reminded that you are betrothed to the King of Kings, that you make up with every believer from every time, 
you make up the beautiful body of the Lord Jesus Christ that is given in the scriptures when Christ who is our life shall appear we shall appear with him in glory that you share in all the everlasting prospects of Christ you share in appearing with him when he comes in his glory a glorious church not having spot or blemish or any such thing holy and without blame Jay and Trace these are the things really that make our celebration this afternoon so sweet. These are the things that make us drink in this company and these flowers and these other things. These are the things that cause us to look at you, Trace, a lovely bride adorned for your husband, representing to us the Lamb's wife, having the very glory of God. <clears throat> Jay and Trace, because of the the very serious nature of covenant making. It's appropriate that the two of you will take and make vows to each other as a seal of this occasion. I would simply remind you before we begin that a vow is not primarily and first and foremost made to your spouse, but rather a vow is made before God Almighty in whose presence we now believe we stand. And so I would beg you not to take this occasion lightly. But Jay, would you turn and take Trace's hand and repeat after me? I, J, take you trace. I, J, take you trace. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And now, Trace, will you repeat after me? I, Trace, take you, Jay. I, Trace, take you, Jay. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful wife to be your loving and faithful wife in plenty and in want in plenty and in want in joy and in sorrow in joy and in sorrow in sickness and in health in sickness and in health as long as we both shall live as long as we both shall live and now Jay do you have a token of this covenant Place the ring on Trace's finger and repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Trace, do you have a token of this covenant? I do. Place the ring on Jay's finger and repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, it is Jay and Trace's desire that you all be much more than just spectators at this service of worship. You too have responsibilities to this covenant as its witnesses. And what better way to embrace those responsibilities than to join our hearts together in prayer for Jay and Trace as they begin their lives together. Let us pray. Most merciful and gracious God, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, bestow upon these your servants the seal of your approval and your fatherly benediction, granting unto them grace to fulfill with pure and steadfast affection the vow and covenant made between them. Guide them together, we ask you, in the way of righteousness and peace, that loving and serving you with one heart and mind all the days of their life, they may be abundantly enriched with the tokens of your everlasting favor. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing this afternoon a great mystery. For in the union of a man and a woman in marriage, we get a glimpse of a great secret. 
And that secret is God's plan for the universe, having been revealed in the person and the work of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That plan, it turns out, involves a bride for His Son. And in the fullness of time, God revealed through the prophets and the apostles that the bride that God had chosen for His Son was none other than the church, the people of God as they gather together. This is why Jay and Trace have asked you to sing with them a great hymn to the church, a hymn which celebrates not merely a local body of believers as we are here, but the church universal as she was and is and always shall be under the great providential care of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us then stand and sing the church's one foundation printed in your bulletins. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ alone. And now won't you all raise your heads to receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. It gives me great pleasure to be the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. James Leonard Robertson III.